peak oil. Global leaders are reluctant to confront peak oil. However, peak oil was probably one of the main triggers of the global financial crisis and it will probably be the issue which forces the world to seriously address climate change. But peak oil is only part of the much broader question of global sustainability, arguably the greatest challenge humanity has ever faced. The immediate problem is the convergence of peak oil, climate change, water and food shortages now compounded by the aftermath of the global financial crisis. This convergence has been looming for some time and it highlights the fundamental unsustainability of our global society with increasing population and increasing consumption within a finite system. The five elements are inextricably linked, despite the fact that we still insist on treating them separately. Their convergence has received minimal attention, which is unfortunate, as it is likely to have an effect far greater than the sum of the individual parts. Cheap energy has been the cornerstone of successful societies for centuries. Take it away, and societies historically have either broken down, reorganised at a lower energy level and moved on, or they collapsed and disappeared. Today, concerns are increasingly being expressed by senior figures in the energy industries that the days of cheap energy are indeed over, and supply will not be able to keep up with increasing demand. China alone, for example, on business-as-usual projections, will need some two to three additional Saudi Arabias to meet its oil requirements alone. Saudi Arabia is the world's largest oil producer, and it is highly unlikely that three additional Saudi Arabias will materialise. The question then arises, if cheap energy does disappear, do we have the ability and maturity to avoid the fate of earlier societies? According to the International Energy Agency, IEA, energy demand will increase under a business-as-usual scenario by 45% between now and 2030, with coal growing by 61%. In the light of potential oil supply constraints and climate change concerns, the IEA considered this to be patently unsustainable. Which raises the issue of peak oil. Peak oil takes its name from the bell-shaped curve which typifies the production profile of any oil field or oil producing nation. Once an oil field is discovered, Oil wells are drilled, production rises, reaches a peak, and then drops until the reservoir is exhausted. At the peak, oil does not run out, as roughly half of the ultimately available oil remains to be produced. However, it is the point globally at which an increase in the rates of oil production becomes impossible because production from new oil fields is increasingly offset by the decline of production from existing oil fields. Peaking is evident in more and more countries around the world. As a consequence, the IEA suggested in 2008 that the decline in global oil production might be as high as 6.7% per year. The problem has arisen quite simply because the rates of discovery of oil reserves have fallen dramatically over the last few decades, whilst our consumption of oil has done the reverse. The official view from organisations like the IEA is that we have abundant oil resources available from both conventional and unconventional sources. But it is one thing to have theoretical oil resources in the ground. It is quite another to convert those resources into concrete oil flows to the market. Converting resources to oil flows is proving difficult. The reasons supply has not been expanding to meet demand are, first, we are not discovering new oil fields quickly enough and certainly no giant fields. Second, data on existing fields is suspect, particularly in the Middle East, so we may not have as much oil as we thought. 
Third, production from many existing oil fields is declining as part of the natural process, often more quickly than admitted officially. Fourth, unconventional oil resources, such as deep water and tar sands, are proving more difficult to develop technically and economically, even with higher oil prices. They also have major environmental problems, such as high carbon emissions and high demand for water and energy. Fifth, oil-producing countries are using more oil domestically and are less prepared to export it. The changing official future. The official view, which for years has been boundlessly optimistic, has been scrambling to catch up with reality. Sheikh Yamani, the former Saudi and OPEC oil minister, said in 2003, The Stone Age did not end for lack of stones, and the Oil Age will end long before the world runs out of oil. Fatih Birol, the chief economist of the IEA, stated in 2007, Our energy system's wheels may fall off within the next seven years. And in 2008 he said, we must leave oil before it leaves us. King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia remarked in 2008, When there were some new finds, I told them, Leave it in the ground. Our children will need it. A sentiment we can expect to hear increasingly from oil-producing countries. Global Oil and Gas Depletion, ASPO 2008 Base Case all of this suggests that we probably are approaching the long-forecast peak of global supply. The current view of the Association for the Study of Peak Oil, ASPO, is that we are very close to the peak of conventional oil today. We may have already passed the peak, or it may be some years ahead, but the exact date is less important than accepting the principle and taking action to prepare for it as solutions take time to implement. Global oil supply. Opinions differ. But opinions still differ on oil supply prospects, although there is now much greater acceptance of the peak oil thesis. Some forecasters have similar views to ASPO, suggesting that we may see a net oil supply decline of 25 to 50 percent by 2030. Others maintain there will be no problem for some years ahead, even with rapidly increasing demand. Oil supply reductions of this magnitude would represent a traumatic change for a world accustomed to cheap and readily available supply. World Oil Production, IEA Reference Scenario The challenge the IEA view represents is enormous. In order to meet the expected demand, we will need the equivalent of six times the current capacity of Saudi Arabia. It may be a sharp peak if, for example, some of the giant fields start to decline rapidly. Or it may be an undulating plateau spread over a number of years if, for example, oil demand is destroyed as a result of recession or countries are no longer able to afford high oil prices both of which have been happening. So having defined the problem, what are the solutions? There is no one-size-fits-all solution, but there are many small solutions. They range from obvious energy conservation and efficiency to fundamental redesign of our way of life. For example, with transport systems, urban design, taxation, incentives and alternative fuels. The important point is that all these components of the solution take at least a decade to implement. Hence, we should be planning for them now. Action is needed now. Ian Dunlop was formerly an international oil, gas and coal industry executive. He chaired the Australian Coal Association in 1987-88, chaired the Australian Greenhouse Office Experts Group on Emissions Trading from 1998 to 2000 and was CEO of the Australian Institute of Company Directors from 1997 to 2001. He is a member of the Club of Rome, Chairman of Safe Climate Australia and Deputy Convener of the Australian Association for the Study of Peak Oil.